Welcome back to On the Record. Today I had the pleasure of interviewing Mr. Tim Brennan over uh, at Records and Tapes Galore over here on Court Street here in Saginaw, Michigan. And fascinating interview to me. He, Tim had operated a pirate radio station here in the Tri-Cities uh, back in the 1990s. And he shares some of his stories with us and, and uh, what happened with his encounters with the FCC. So I hope you'll enjoy this really interesting bit of history. Welcome back to On the Record, and today I'm here at Records and Tapes Galore uh, with my friends Bill and Judy, and my new friends Tim and Kelly. And Tim has uh, he has an interesting background that uh, we're going to talk about today, and that's pirate radio. Um, Kelly, or uh, Tim, excuse me, what exactly is pirate radio? Well, when I think of um Pirate Radio, I th think of that movie that uh, the guy that o OD'd, um, uh, the blonde haired guy who was in the. Oh, movie. Philip Seymour Hoffman. Right. In, yeah. in the name of the movie, I don't know, but. Pirate Radio, I, I believe it yeah, was. Yeah, it was a movie. And, and, and um, it just. It just it, and then also, there was a guy that on 9th Street where I grew up that. that in Bay City. In, in Bay City on 9th Street, Wenlands. His name was Mike Wenland. He's still he's still around. And uh, he ended up like going to uh, coast, right? Yes, it was in it was in England I think. Okay. Um, anyways, uh, I saw that movie and, and uh, I thought, God, would that be a neat thing to do? Uh, of course their deal was on a much Larger uh, scale, scale, yeah. yeah. But we, we we were fortunately we ran seven years. Seven years, old. yeah. And uh, I ended up having a beautiful black girl uh, come to my house uh, along with uh, relations, an older guy. <laughs> I, I, had, I had my, I had my, I had Not my wife. Not wrong with that. I had my wife's ro robe on. <laughs> nothing underneath and uh, they were there to take uh, they took something on me the transmitter I don't know did, did it take... where you operated where out in, in my the... basement uh, on uh, Primrose Lane in Essexville Primrose Lane that was a good song <laughs> it was a good name or a good song way way back <laughs> way back uh, but anyways so this was in Hampton Township during the 90s, right? Right. Okay. So that was getting really more towards the end of radio as we knew it. It's changed so much. Well, there was something that was said that it's okay to do that mm -hmm. under a certain amount of... Um, like a power signal? Yeah, right. Well, yeah. then I would ask how, what kind of coverage area did you have? Well, we could go, um, you could pick it up at Delta, you know, I, I used to ride around and, and, and go quite a ways on, on, on. You could pick it up on I-75. Yeah. Okay, so you had... We had a good, good range. Yeah, because I, I had read that some of them, some pirate stations only actually couple, covered a couple blocks. Yeah, right. a few you blocks. A I did. Power signal. That's what I was going to ask you. How, what the what the power was? How did you acquire a transmitter? Well, a good friend of mine, uh, whom I won't mention his name. <laughs> <laughs> That'll keep him a good friend. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so, anyways, I got the stuff from Joe. And his last name will remain anonymous. Okay. <laughs> and uh, um, I, I had a train. I still got it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's so, all it's all at the office. Mm -hmm. So you and, can go back into business if you wanted to. Yeah, I, I'm, <laughs> ever a temptation? Always, always. And Joe, you know, the guy who remains anonymous, um, he uh, he refuses to uh, do it anymore. He's afraid he's going to get popped. Uh, he was the technical department, right? <laughs> okay. And uh, he set it up, and, and then for seven years. He only came out a couple of times to tweak something. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the weather played a very large uh, 
roll? Roll. You know, because if it was crappy weather, you wouldn't get the range that you do on a day like today. Right. You know. So, you were FM? Yes. Okay. So, like 67.8. Yeah, probably like 87.8, oh, uh, somewhere yeah. around the low end of the FM dial. Like exactly. Below the NPR level. Okay. Yeah. What was your format for music? Everything. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> Everything. You know, Bill, I would, you know, I'd buy the oddest stuff you had and, because uh, uh, and, uh, I, I, I had come up with quite a few it was hard to find uh, a player, a CD player, we were on CDs, and I think sometimes we could do, well, it, was, it would be hard to pay attention to it, uh, you need to uh, he help would, me out. He would, Tim would get one of these large CD changers that had capacity for like 120 CDs. And then he, he would go, come here to records and tapes galore and buy CDs like the greatest Irish music hits of the Clancy Brothers <laughs> okay. or like famous polka songs and like put these CDs in the CD changer and, and then there would be like nonstop, you know, Irish music for an hour and 15 minutes for that CD and then it would go to the Polka greatest hits. My dad would help you too. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he, he just would come here to the uh, records and tapes galore, used CD bins, and buy whatever Bill had. <laughs> I'd get the fresh ones when they came in. So I think you might want to look at this one. Then you then you might play Tom Waits. Yes. Right? Yeah. 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 So you didn't get into really controversial music, or did you? There was some uh, smut. Well, okay. that's a good, that's a good way well to put it. plus Tim Tim always had bizarre musical tastes where he would be tolerant of artists like Frank Zappa, for mm -hmm. example, or or Devo, mm -hmm. or uh, you know Captain Beefheart, mm -hmm. something off the wall like that would not be uh, below Tim's standards. So you could get away with things that regular commercial radio wouldn't be able to. Right, right. Well, that's that's. So tell me about the the FCC. I, I hear they gave you, or tried to give you a few difficulties. Well, they, they said there was like a $11,000 uh, fine. Fine, yeah. If I didn't get off that day. And they meant business. And mm -hmm. um, so I gave them what they wanted and figured I had a good run, uh, seven years. And thinking that maybe I could sneak it back on again. And I think I could, but. You know, we probably all know who, who, who turned me in. Oh, you think? Oh, yeah. That's, that's you. Oh, so no, I don't have any. They have some specialized equipment they use or something? I don't know. I don't know. I didn't. I wanted to get them out of there because I just had that robe on. But, uh. They came to your front door? Came to my front door, knocked on it, and the kids and Cindy <laughs> said, there's somebody here to see you. And, and uh, so there was a kind of a family deal um, getting shut down on uh, uh, pirate radio. Yeah. So did you basically work at Lono or did your family help you? Or? No, I just did it. You know, like Kelly said, we had a 25 CD, you know, changer. Changer and, and it, I'd only need to do it if there was a, a problem and there, there really were no were any problems. So that's good. The, um, oh, sorry, my mind for a second. Oh, well, the th there was never, there was never a microphone for. Uh, you might ask him the name of the radio station, by the way. There was never a microphone, so there was never any spoken words on the air. Oh, oh really? And and uh, I tried to tell Tim that he should have jingles. We, we could record, you know, jingles for the radio station, but he never wanted to do that. I think he wanted to keep it low profile and like under the FCC radar, which he did for a long time. So what was the... Uh, <laughs> it was the uh, lesbian link-up. Um, <laughs> the homo hotline. Homo hotline. <laughs> <laughs> and I would, every once in a while I'd, I'd say it and, and they 
<laughs> and then not do it for a couple of months or when I remembered I, I could do it. Well, it was back in the day when you could get away with that. Right. It was all in good fun. Well, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. But people nowadays don't have any sense of humor. No, no. no. The woke generation. So Tim, some... did, you, did you ever get any calls from uh, listeners saying, you know, I want some more polka music or I want some more Tom Waits or something? No, no, nobody knew. Really, there's not many people knew who was running it. So, uh, you know, it just, uh, by not talking too much on the radio, I, I you know, that, that kind of takes care of that, where somebody would call about that. You know, and sit and say that, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, there were very few requests on the hotline. That's right. <laughs> so, you know, I know my audience, and they're going to want to know. What color was your wife's bathroom? <laughs> it was a white one, white cotton. White cotton, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing and I sense. didn't care if it opened up with that black girl there. No, was... And there were two of them. The, An old guy. A federal agent and the young woman from the FCC. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh -huh. So I'm curious because there's been, just since the 90s, there's been so much change in, in the radio industry and the music industry. How do you feel about the great things I know the music from the Well, there's, you know, there's a lot of um, music being played that we didn't know about. Devo, uh, just just grabbing that. Um, and I, I think I got a jump on Kelly, who was always uh, somebody that was telling me, hey, you ought to listen to this. And, and, uh, but there was a lot of people that knew about, not a lot, but... Um, Your friends. Yeah. And by word of we, mouth. Yeah. yeah. We, we missed out on, on a lot of stuff, like Peter Green on the way here, and uh, Joe Jackson, mm -hmm. and, uh, <clears throat> and then maybe we would find uh, a cowboy uh, music, uh, which was fun, uh, yeah. Bob Wills. Joe Joe is a real fan of that, that obscure stuff. Not that uh, Bob Mills is a. Uh, I know that Peter Green was with Fleetwood Mac. Mac. Oh, He's Peter Green founded Fleetwood Mac. Did he really? Yeah, it was called Peter Green's Fleetwood Mac. So when did Mick Fleetwood come? From he the was start. He was their the founding member, but they were uh, Peter Green. Green's Fleetwood Mac from 1967 when they formed. Mm -hmm until 1970 when Peter Green dropped out of his own band. Okay. And then Mick Fleetwood kind of took the helm and they moved to California and they oh. became just Fleetwood Mac and sort of changed. Yeah. But that was Peter Green's Fleetwood Mac. This is just fucking awesome. awesome. Excuse, Excuse me. <laughs> That's okay. No, no worries. No, no worries. You can express yourself however you want to. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> well, most of the people on my channel are great. 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 to the ones that, that had the back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, he sold in 2000. Tim's father and his two uncles were the owners of Brennan Marine. Okay. And so Tim was a sales manager selling boats at Brennan Marine. I appreciate that. So you had some deep connections here in the Bay City area. Oh yeah, Michigan actually. Yeah. I would just say this was a unique moment in time in the Saginaw Valley Absolutely. where uh, unbeknownst to most of the people, we had a pirate radio station operating in the Tri-Cities. I never knew it till Bill told me. And uh, it was at uh, something like 86.1, way down in the uh, left, left hand side of the FM dial, uh, hidden. Mm -hmm. But if, if you happened to stumble on it, you heard some crazy music. And it, it was just all over the map. That's uh, one thing I love about the record store here. I, I do that. I love a huge variety. The things I would have never listened to when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Bill always has something awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> always. It's a great record store. It is. Records and Tapes Galore is, a, is an institution in mid-Michigan. Right. And he's been around since the mid-70s when he and Judy, you know, you've seen the picture behind the counter. Yeah. Not, it's not as, uh, what's the word? Polished? Professional? Well, no, that too, that too, but the name is nowhere near as fun as the name that you had. <laughs> nowhere near as The homo hotline. <laughs> or the lesbian link-up. So there was an attorney 
that, that um, picked up on it. And uh, yeah. uh, he was he's, he's in a band. I forget what the name of the band is, but I got a little bit. Oh, of, uh, Charlie Wamsley? No, not Charlie. Charlie's, you know, he's, he's, he missed out on those guys. Uh, like, um, well, Evan Dando, okay. Lemonheads. Here come the Lemonheads, uh, along with some others. But there's a lot of guys. What would you say about Charlie, Kelly? You're not done yet. <laughs> We're talking about Charlie and if we, if we, Dennis, right? Yeah. Okay. We talked about um, Charlie not really being into what you and I listen to. They like blues. Yeah. And but I like blues rock. Like Peter Green. Peter Green, yeah. yeah. And um, gosh there's just so much to to digest on in this this uh, music stuff. Uh, there should be more people having um, um more people having underground music. Well, yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if they know what they're missing or not. You know, I think we put up the um, um, the antenna, and it was you know that's twenty twenty five foot tall. Now that would be hard to conceal, wouldn't it? Well, no, not where we lived on Primrose. It was heavily wooded. It's in the uh, Hampton Township, east okay. of east of Bay City, in, in like uh, a subdivision. It's pretty anonymous. I, go ahead. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. You were talking about putting the antenna up. Yeah, well, the guy that did that was Small Paul. Uh, and he's, a, he, he's in heaven now, but he was uh, just a ton of fun. And uh, I remember we, we, uh, we, were, we had to go to pick up my son at... Um, a, uh, rest, or not a restaurant, a hospital, mail, went to mail for some, um, and anyways, Paul rode with me and we went and got my son Andy, brought him home, and, but Paul has is is got so much, had so much talent, it's, it's unreal, but he's gone, he's been gone probably five, ten years from cancer. Small Paul helped me put up the uh, um, the antenna. It was, it was uh, the antenna was <coughs> blocked off the the window, you know. But we could still see everything we needed to see. But I wanted I want to make mention of Small Paul that he's an avid helper uh, in uh, the lesbian link up. And, uh, now, did did you come up with those names yourself, or did you have? I paid somebody. No, I it just it just happened, you know. <clears throat> we always. I mean, it's not making fun of, but it's, no, no. But it, it's got a good jingle to it. You know? <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> that's interesting. So it's a name that you wouldn't soon forget. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> but it's stuck in people's minds. So we've been we've been pretty lucky, and uh, to pull that seven-year deal out was was cool. Uh, and, uh, I want to thank you both so much for taking here. the time to talk to me and, you and my viewers. I know you enjoyed it. I should have enjoyed meeting both of you. Thanks, Kelly, Dennis. Thank you so much, thank you, Dennis. Kelly. Thank Thanks, you. Dennis. Bye bye. So are we all.